How's it going everybody? I am AV Obsessed and these are the SVS Prime bookshelf speakers. Now you might be wondering why the heck is this guy checking out the SVS Prime bookshelf speakers? They've been out for almost 10 years now. And if that sounds crazy to you, yes, I looked it up. These speakers were released in 2016, so they've been out for nine years now. Um, the reason I decided to check them out is because uh, since they have been out for such a long time, I have a very strong feeling that SVS probably early next year is going to be releasing what I'm assuming they're going to call the Prime Evolution bookshelf speakers. It would make sense because they had they used to have the Prime and the Ultra series, and now they came out with the Ultra Evolution series. So hopefully I am right in predicting that they're going to come out with the Prime Evolution series of speakers next year to replace these. And since I've never actually had these speakers before, I decided that I should get a pair in so I could evaluate them before the refresh comes out next year. Now, like I said, these are all speculations that I'm making. I, I don't have any inside information as to whether or not SVS is going to be coming out with a, a new version of these next year. So. I bought these speakers just strictly on the guess that they're coming out with a refresh next year. So let's see if I'm right. Uh, this video is not going to be the review. Um, if you have been watching my channel regularly, you probably have figured out by now that since I don't get a lot of stuff sent to, be, to, sent to me by the manufacturers for review, I have in the past been kind of milking the content from each product that I get by doing an unboxing video and then the review. Um, I feel like that is not exactly the most entertaining thing for the viewers. So since people have seemed to enjoy the videos where I take things apart, I've decided when I need to milk for content, I'm going to do a video where I take apart a speaker or you know something else that I'm reviewing and also do the the full review like the following week. So I'm gonna, I will have thrown up the, just the quick unboxing that I did record of these, but like, like I said, there's not a lot of content there when you're just unboxing a speaker. So let's just get into the tear down here. I haven't taken these speakers apart yet, but I did figure out exactly which hex head tip I'm gonna need to take out these screws. And fortunately, they're all the same sized hex head, but the one thing that's a little different is the fact that each screw looks like it's a different style of head on the woofer. The heads are rounded on the top, and on the tweeter they seem to be flat, so I will have to make sure I keep each of these screws separate. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right away is none of these screws are torqued down particularly hard. They're just kind of snug in there. Like you could probably unscrew these even if I didn't have the whole screwdriver. If I just had just the little hex head tip in there, they would probably come out. But that's, that's not a bad thing in any way. Let's do the woofer first. So I'm going to tip it forward. And then it should, unless they like stick it in there. Nope, it just pops right out. Now I'm gonna tip it back on its backside. And I have to be very careful doing the uh, disassembly on these because I did get the piano gloss black version of these speakers, which I know some people are not fans of the gloss black, but I am. I think it makes everything just look considerably more high-end. Okay, I might have to cut here because these, I hate these kinds of uh, terminals. They are a pain in the butt to get off sometimes, so I'm gonna probably either cut it or speed it up here. All right, now we've got the little quick disconnects disconnected so you can see. Let's check out this woofer first. Not a particularly large magnet. It's not double stacked or anything like that. And surprisingly, it doesn't have a vented pole piece. If you don't know what that means, the basically there's like a little bit of air pressure that you get that builds up 
in the between the voice coil of the speaker and the pole piece of the magnet. So basically, you know, this magnet right here is essentially a ring and then this metal backer also has a piece that goes right in through the middle of the magnet and that's called the pole piece. And a lot of higher end speakers these days, they put in a vented pole piece so that basically there's nowhere for the air to escape from the front of the voice coil because of the dust cap here. And essentially in this speaker, there's not really a place for the air to escape through the back of the voice coil either because there's not a vented pull piece. So that can cause a little bit of like, you know, reduced sensitivity and stuff like that with the woofer. It's uh, not the biggest deal, especially at the price point of these speakers. So no vented pull piece, not a double stacked magnet. I do like the, um, the plastic basket for this woofer though, because it's, that might seem like it's a cheaper way to do it versus like a stamped steel basket, but you get less resonance with a, uh, a plastic basket based uh, woofer. So all in all for the price point of these, I think this is a pretty decent little woofer, non-resonant like plastic speaker cone there. Let's set that guy aside and get out the tweeter next. I wonder how big the magnet is going to be on Mr. Tweeter here. So, oh yeah, by the way, that is a six and a half inch polypropylene cone woofer. And now I'm taking out the one inch aluminum dome tweeter here. I may take this thing apart. I don't know for sure. It slightly worries me taking apart this tweeter but I'm also just that curious about whether or not it's going to be something that you could quite easily take apart. Like if you watched my anatomy of a speaker video where I took apart the Klipsch RP600M series two, I um, took the tweeter apart on that speaker and it wasn't an issue. So maybe I could take it apart on this SVS as well. Ooh, do they stick the tweeter in place in these? That would be interesting. Let's see if I can get these off while it's in the speaker. Oh, yeah, this tweeter was a little bit stuck in there, but not too bad. Okay, now we've got the tweeter disconnected and, um, I feel like this is an interesting build for this tweeter. There's some kind of a plastic cap on the back still a pretty decent sized magnet on this guy and aluminum front plate I love the grill like exposed domes are such a hazard to have around like children and stuff like that so like I, I've my brother has a pair of Focal Electra tower speakers with a beryllium dome tweeter and there's no metal grill that covers them so like I don't know for sure how it happened, but he has a little tiny hole in his tweeter dome. But that is the tweeter. Now let's take a look inside the box. So there's actually, I would say, some nicer uh, padding material inside of the, uh, the box on this speaker versus like when I took apart the Klipsch. Um, I like that they wrapped the, um, the speaker cables with this foam material that's also very nice uh, the port is very small and fairly short I don't know if you can see it in there but it doesn't go back very far it's only like maybe three inches into the cabinet and yeah I do like this foam material not foam but like heavy wool or something like that material that they have inside of here for the padding there's no cross bracing whatsoever which now that the woofer and the tweeter are out of the speaker, it does sound like it could use maybe a tiny bit of cross bracing, like maybe for the Prime Evolution series, they could have a cross brace that maybe is like a plus sign shaped piece of MDF that kind of goes from side to side here and front to back here. That would add some rigidity to the cabinet. 
I do notice that this is a very thick front baffle on this speaker. I don't know if you can see that in the camera there, but just j like considering that this is already um, routered out a little bit so that the, the tweeter and the woofer are recessed in by like maybe a quarter of an inch, probably a little bit less, more like uh, um, an eighth or three sixteenths or something like that. But the actual front baffle itself feels like it is at least a full inch, not counting that routered out area. And then you could see the crossover in the back there that is attached to the terminals, the terminal plate or terminal cup. Let's see if we can pull that out easily. Sometimes with these, the um, crossover is like too big and it's very difficult to pull the uh, terminal cup out of the hole. Let's see if we can get this one so we can take a little bit of a look at the crossover. Now, I am not the crossover expert. That's Danny Ritchie. I'm assuming since these speakers have been out for so long, he probably has a video where he like took apart and upgraded the crossover on one of these, but we'll get a look at it too because, but like I said, I, I'm not the type of guy who could sit there and point out every type of uh, component on the crossover. But let's see, I know enough just to talk a little bit about it. And, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, the crossover is definitely a lot bigger than the hole for this, so let's see if it's even possible to pull this out without having to unscrew the crossover from the terminal plate. I don't think it's going to be, though. Oh, 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 it is. Oh, yeah. She's coming out. All right. So, that is now an empty speaker cabinet. I would say all the way around, it's about a three-quarter inch MDF cabinet. But then the front baffle, it's it's thickened up to about a one inch front baffle, which is really nice. And like I said, it could use the tiniest little bit of cross bracing, but all in all, I would say that's a pretty good cabinet for the price that they are asking for these speakers. And here is the crossover. So as you can see on the very back, no way to uh, buy wire or buy amp these speakers, which I would say for a speaker at this price point is perfectly acceptable. It is a pretty small crossover here though. There is not a lot going on. I believe that's a resistor tower right there. And it looks like we've got just some uh, iron core inductors and, and another little capacitor and another little capacitor, like nothing big going on on this crossover. So yes, these speakers probably could use a crossover upgrade, like I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure GR Research Danny Ritchie has done that. Um, but the one thing I would question on that is if you buy a speaker that uh, costs as, you know, a, as little as these do, but then you spend a couple hundred dollars on buying upgraded crossovers, you probably would have been better off just buying, you know, like the Ultra Evolution bookshelves, but you know, some people like to tinker and upgrade and there is nothing wrong with that. But yeah, that those are the insides of the SVS Ultra, not Ultra, the SVS Prime bookshelves, the old ones that came out in 2016. So I'll be very interested to see when they come out with the Ultra, Evo, or oh, the Prime Evolution series. I'm still going with that and assuming that that's what they're going to call it. We'll see how different it is. And now I am going to work on taking apart this tweeter. Hopefully it is easy to take apart without damaging anything. It should be, I honestly think. So let's find out. Okay, those are some very short screws that hold the front plate on the tweeter. Let's pop off all four of these. Yeah, the first first one I unscrewed, I uh, unscrewed it for a while, expecting it to be longer, but it was just being held in because of the magnet, obviously, of the tweeter holding it in. 
But I have been listening to these speakers for the better part of a week now, I believe. And so far, I am pretty impressed with the way that they sound for a speaker at, you know, I think they're 650 a pair or so, right? Oh my gosh, and that's it? Wow, okay. So once you unscrew the four screws that hold the front plate on, that's everything. So there's the magnet. And, oh, the magnet on this, that's interesting. So it's its very deep. It's almost like they did a vented pull piece. They shoved some foam in there to tamp down on reflections within that, that, um hole that they put in the magnet and that's why they put this plastic cap on the end because this hole probably goes all the way through interesting i just wonder like would this would the tweeter sound even better like i wonder if they tried experiments where they just left this wide open so that they remove the foam and they don't put the plastic cap on here and then oh but then the uh the internal pressure of the woofer would interfere with the sound of the tweeter so they would have to essentially have this be open that would be super interesting imagine having a tube that runs all the way through the back of the magnet and goes all the way out the back of the speaker that would be interesting but i don't think i've ever seen anybody do that but yeah so basically once you take out the um the four screws that hold the front plate on that's everything. So that is the inside of the aluminum dome tweeter on these SVS Prime bookshelf speakers. And it's just attached to the front plate directly. And then they have the little grill over there that protects it. But yeah, that's that's an interesting construction method for these speakers. I, I would say that I like that. And it spins well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is the end of this video. If you guys want to see, even though, yes, I know these speakers have been out for almost 10 years now, but if you want to see my full review, that is going to be coming out next week on Friday. And then I may be uh, milking more content from these where I do some comparisons to more recent uh, speakers that have come out in the same kind of price range. Like I'm thinking Klipsch RP600M Series 2 and ELAC DB63 comparison after the standalone review for these uh, Prime bookshelves. So make sure that you like the video and you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.